kicking off our book reviews of 2022 at the bottom of the list are the fragments of papius which is at number 12. According to Eusebius, Papias was a bishop in Hierapolis, which is Phrygia or modern-day Turkey. Papias had heard the teachings of the Apostle John and was a companion of Polycarp. This information is given to us by Polycarp's disciple Irenaeus, and then also we have Eusebius recording some of his works, and they interact with it and criticize it and kind of show their disagreements and things like this. Papias is writing in the late 1st and early 2nd century. His surviving work is sparse, and there isn't much there, so uh, it comes in at the bottom of the list. But there are some things that are worth noting. The voice of the Lord. Papias only wanted to hear Jesus' voice. Jesus' teachings are what he was interested in hearing. He says, For I did not, like the multitude, take pleasure in those who spoke much, but in those who taught the truth, nor in those who related strange commandments, but in those who rehearsed the commandments given by the Lord to faith and proceeding from truth itself. Now, this is interesting interesting because it shows that Papias is learning about Jesus from teachers orally, that is by hearing and not by a Bible. Papias continues, If then anyone who had attended on the elders came, I asked minutely after their sayings in what Andrew or Peter said, or what was said by Philip or by Thomas or by James or by John or by Matthew or by any other of the Lord's disciples, which things Aristean and the presbyter John, the disciples of the Lord, say. For I imagine that what was to be got from books was not so profitable to me as what came from the living and abiding voice. Not completely sure what he means by all of this, but it is interesting that he is, again, eager to hear what the disciples and apostles of Jesus have to say about Jesus. Papias is eager to hear that living and abiding voice of Jesus through the apostles and disciples. The kingdom glorious. Papias gives us an agraphon, a non-canonical word from Christ. It's a teaching that highlights the glory of the new heavens and the new earth. As the elders who saw John, the disciple of the Lord, remembered that they had heard from him how the Lord taught in regard to those times and said... The days will come in which vines shall grow, having each 10,000 branches, and in each branch 10,000 twigs, and in each true twig 10,000 shoots, and in every one of the shoots 10,000 clusters, and on every one of the clusters 10,000 grapes, and every grape when pressed will give five and twenty mitrates of wine, and when any one of the saints shall lay hold of a cluster, another shall cry out, I am a better cluster, take me. Bless the Lord through me. In like manner, he said that a grain of wheat would produce 10,000 years, and that every year would have 10,000 grains, and every grain would yield 10 pounds of clear, pure, fine flour, and that apples and seeds and grass would produce in similar proportions, and that all animals feeding then only on the productions of the earth would become peaceable and harmonious and be in perfect subjection to man. Irenaeus comments on this passage, saying that it is the time that Isaiah prophesied when the wolf would lay down with the lamb. Papias appears to place the kingdom time as the consummate heavens and earth that is uh, after the time of the resurrection he quotes paul from his first letter to the corinthians for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death then he adds for in the times of the kingdom the just man who is on the earth shall forget to die semper virgo lastly papius appears to affirm semper virgo or the perpetual virginity of mary he mentions four different marys in the gospels then he relates that james and judas and joseph were sons of an aunt of the lords james also and john were sons of another aunt of the lords so rather than talking of james as a brother of jesus he mentions james as a cousin some interesting things here not saying i agree with all of them but it does give us insight into uh, the early church particularly the suggestion of semper virgo very early on Christ.